Hello everybody, Adrian Plus here. Yeah, and Bridget, hello. And uh, this is number 104 of Sounding the Shallows. <laughs> and uh, thank you everybody who's contacted us over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. It's so nice to hear from people. It is, and we've um, had a couple of really lovely ones. Those we know we? and those we don't. <laughs> yes. um, yeah. Yeah, we have had some Just that, some have, that have amused yeah. us, yeah. I think. And one of them, you know, um, it must be a few weeks ago now, we were talking about 101. And um, I don't know if you remember, but somebody really hates bananas, wanted them to be in, in 101. Adrian then wrote a defence of bananas. And now... We have an email saying, please could I nominate myself to go into room 101? You see, as you put all the bananas into that Orwellian chamber, and I like bananas as much as Adrian loves pears, then I simply must go there. So the image of shredding this person just to be with the bananas is well, a little I think tricky. Just but just sitting in pitch darkness with a, a mass of banana flesh is a little bit strange, but... Uh, oh. Well, okay. each to his own. Yeah, if that's what you want, we'll arrange that. <laughs> but okay. the other one was a little while ago. Well, this, we were talking about sweet moments. Yeah, this we? was a very sweet moment, and it's uh, sent by a, a, a friend of ours. And um, it's very interesting. He was talking about um, possibly when he was eleven or twelve, I think, and his uh, it was his birthday coming up, and um, there was a, a game in the local shop that he really liked the look of. It was one of those football games, and probably a, a Sabutio game. No, no, it wasn't Sabutio. I think he says that was a bit too expensive, but it was a Waddington. Oh, right, an, an alternative game. to that, yeah. right. Anyway, on the day before his birthday, he suddenly saw his little mum, as he called her, walking along the pavement outside their front window with the Waddington's box under her arm. And even now, nearly uh, 60 years later, um, he gets hours of enjoyment from that little game and the board uh, remembering that moment when it appeared the board with the pitch on it opened out to three feet long and stood half as wide and the players were little plastic men and the goals were quite small and the ball was a white tiddlywink but the whole thing worked well mm -hmm. and he says I could play the game on my own handling both teams and inventing a little imaginary league <laughs> wonderful and he says it must have cost his mum quite a lot of whatever spare cash she'd got and he never asked because at the time he didn't realise how tight money was mm. but now he suspects she'd been putting a little amount aside for several weeks just to create mm. a very sweet moment mm. what a I, lovely mum I love the fact that that was so exciting at the time and so brilliant and then later on realizing that there was sacrifice involved as well and that it was it was something really really special that was another part of the generosity on. wasn't it yeah. to, to do it without yeah. saying now i've really spent a lot of money on <laughs> no, you this year right. so i don't want you breaking it no that's right that's right well i think anybody in the world might know what's going on in the uk this week i don't think anybody will have been able to avoid seeing it really no, that is quite true. I believe it's something to do with the Queen. Yes, I think it might be. And it's it's been, uh, I have to say, kind of better than I thought, because I'm not a great one for big celebrations. But mm. there's something about this person, yeah, and this this celebration, this dedication for and seventy this length of years. Time. I know. And I'll tell you something that really interested me. I don't know how many of you watched. Uh, I'm not just in this country, but all over the world, I expect, uh, a collection of um, really home movies. Yeah, unseen uh, footage unseen is how it footage, was described, yeah, I think. About the Queen as a, as a very small child and then as a slightly older uh, girl and then as she grew up. And there was something about it that mm. was... I can't quite describe it. There, there were a couple of things that I think showed how she became the sort of consistent, very strong-minded person she was. Can you, I mean, what, what were those well, things particularly? Well, I think the first one was love. Mm. Uh, watching her father, uh, the king, <laughs> doing the most ludicrous things with her. Uh, to, On a little to make bike her laugh. at one point. Yeah, riding yes. a little bike at one yes. point. Um, and, but the, it was the look in his eyes yeah. and the, the look of absolute uh, certainty in her eyes, sureness. 
that she was with someone who really, really loved her. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that that being filled with love mm. is a very good start. And I, I'm and for those who haven't experienced that, it would, it's very difficult even to understand. But to to know that someone thinks about you and mm. cares about you and works for you, and and backs you up and is proud of you and is waiting mm. to see how well you do. So that, for me, that was the first thing. Was the even was as you were love. saying it, you yeah. know, I was thinking about the fact that they had a freedom because he was not king and was not expecting to be king. Mm. And maybe for the queen herself, when she was a young mum, she didn't have quite the same freedom. But I was very struck. You said about some of this old film when she was twenty-one. Mm. She did this speech, didn't she? Gave this speech in which she was dedicating her life to service. Yeah, and we right. were talking about the fact that if it wasn't that she has mm. <laughs> seventy years, it would have sounded a bit up herself and a bit bland at twenty-one to really be saying. Sh I'm really going... shouldn't talk about the queen like that. Sorry, <laughs> but you know what I mean? That, it, that <laughs> no, she was I, saying, I I'm going to dedicate yeah. my life to the whole yeah. of the Commonwealth and the world and all the rest of it at 21. We look back now and really she has. Well, it was it was like that all through those, those films, actually. And because she actually did a little commentary much yeah. later in the film. And the things she said were, they were kind of sound bites of, of of how she handles life and um, her her view of the best way to go if you want to do your duty and be good and all the other stuff mm. that people often talk about mm. but as you say as you listen to her you thought those those things she's saying if it were somebody else in other circumstances you might say yeah well yeah it's but happening. actually she has been incredibly consistent for 70 years. Yes, I mean, I think, you know, there's no doubt that, that the whole royal thing doesn't impact uh, young people in maybe the same way. They're looking for the fashions, they're looking for the... Yeah. But I think a lot of people have been deeply affected by this. It's taken them a bit by surprise, like it did after the Duke of Edinburgh died. Mm. And there was so much good stuff that came out about him and somebody said I suddenly realized he wasn't a, a racist who said rude things to people <laughs> well he was sometimes well, he was but, he was, <laughs> but he was so much more yeah that's and right. you know there's a massive sense of celebration in this there country is. isn't there, there at is, the moment yeah, um yeah. Uh, there's bunting everywhere, and uh, what is bunting? By the <laughs> well, way? it's little, you know, little triangular things that hang on things. That's bunting, is it? Yes, and oh, there's really? lots of flags, and there's yeah, lots of okay. tatty stuff. Actually, yeah. um, it's not a, it's not a, a class act, you know, yeah, putting bunting yeah. up and uh, union jacks. But I think somebody said, uh, I think it was on TV. I may have heard it on the radio, but any excuse for a party mm. and I thought after these long this long period of um, uh, people not really being able to have parties the idea of a street party the idea of people gathering together on in parks and whatever as a whole village or even a whole town mm. to celebrate something is quite special really yeah it is it is it it, we know those words from the Bible, as you said. You know, one one sinner, one sinner who repents, and, the, and there's a rejoicing, a celebration. Yes. Um, it sounds a little unlikely, doesn't it? But <laughs> well, um, I suddenly thought, you know, do you, do you think they have bunting uh, in heaven? And when a, a sinner repents, they all get out the bunting and, uh, and a have a street party and lots of jelly and. Uh, the angels really getting stuck in. Sounds a bit hard work to me. I, mean, I don't know how many people repent every year. But, I'm, no, Come on. but what I what I also thought was that the the thing about having a party, I mean, that something wonderful has happened, and it truly is worth celebrating. And I'm thinking, going back to the love, I was thinking about the fact that many people. Uh, for in, I mean, many people join different faiths, but those who become Christians are the only people we really know about. Um, some of them come into the group. They become uh, people who belong to a church or a, a group of Christians, say. And they're, they've not been loved, or not much. 
and they may even not be particularly good at being good or being nice mm -hmm. and the, the business of arranging for people to become loved mm -hmm. to know that they're loved seems to me the more the older i get the most significant responsibility mm. not just mm. for christians but for mm. anybody who wants to change the world mm. but you can't do it by just saying simple mantras over people or um telling them off um, to create good soil in people and we've said it before about the children we work with in care that many of them came from places where there there was no love or very little love mm -hmm. and just understanding what that meant was very mm -hmm. difficult for mm -hmm. them and i i think of jesus as well um motivated i would say predominantly by love mm. i mean the thought of his father saying that um i don't know if there was a tone of pride in his voice i hope there was when he said this is my son and i'm very proud mm. of him mm. Um, mm. like the mm. queen must have thought often in her life about her father mm. and thought wherever he is i hope he's proud of me and what yeah. i'm doing but i um, like the thought adrian that it doesn't have to be the queen it doesn't have to be jesus it doesn't even have to be anybody who's been good all the time it can no. be somebody who's just made some tiny little step towards yeah. home towards the father and you know coming back to the parties coming back to the celebrations sometimes it is the fuzzy edge churches who allow people in without making them make a commitment first you know who allow them to just be part of the celebrations part of the birthday parties part mm. of maybe part of running a cafe maybe mm. part of just allowing people to gradually feel mm. that they belong and maybe belong first and then think i want to know more i don't know yeah the shortcuts can be very damaging actually to people and what, looking back i can remember some people who we knew i i don't know where they are now but i hope they're all right whatever that means but i can remember people who shot into faith and off like fireworks they went off you know and I, I remember one person, one of them, coming up behind me in a church service and pr um, taking my shoulders and squeezing them and praying loudly over me and me thinking, yeah, easy does it, easy does it, easy does it. And later, he crashed really badly because it was so exciting to be mm. told everything was going to be all right mm. and that you are loved and you are cared for. But you don't you don't learn it in your heart usually as quickly as that mm. so i think there, there is a responsibility to well for a start to make sure that people are really loved yes. and that's not easy always is no. it really no it's not i don't no, think it's not just going back to this uh, party for sinners you know uh i said last week i think it was last week time seems to struggle along quite fast at the moment but that somebody had written a poem about judas and about what it would be like for judas you know is yeah. there going to be a party in heaven for judas if at that last moment he repents mm. we know that he was devastated we know that he took his life according to yeah. the bible but was there a moment when it was kind of all right and and the chief banana hater extraordinaire yes has um said it's all right to read some of her poem it is quite long it's extraordinary and i'm only going to read a little bit of it um but this this is judas judas in darkness judas was he the darkness himself and then the whispers started i love you he felt nothing they were just words to him empty words i love you he couldn't feel it in his heart did he still have a heart down in the depths all he could see was darkness and then it goes on that voice goes on mm -hmm. i love you he was incapable of feeling it or processing it or believing it he knew he was unlovable i delight in you i celebrate you celebrate mm -hmm. your being your existence are celebrating i'm in a pit a pitch black pit. I'm here too. I'm in this pit with you. 
and a pinprick of light appeared. Was he imagining things? No, there really was a light. He'd forgotten that light ever existed down here in the darkness. And it begins, the process begins for him. These words, I love you, it keep, they keep going, they keep going. I'm in the darkness with you. And clearly the way that this is written, this is not just happening for once, it's happening again and again. And finally, those words broke into his heart. Finally, these words had life. For the first time, he let himself entertain the notion there might be a day when the constant stream of condemnation and harassment with which his own brain bullied him would be overpowered and overthrown and that there might be a day when he would be persuaded his soul was not to be despised but valued and delighted over. It really does go on to an absolutely beautiful ending when he believes the words, I will burn away the lies that you came to believe to be true, the lies that burrowed into your soul and whispered to you, telling you you were bad and undeserving of love. I will, and this is Jesus speaking, I will hunt down each lie and flame them out of existence. And finally, finally, I love you, I delight in you, and I say you are good, good. And that is how there came to be light in the deepest, darkest pit. That is how there came to be light when he thought light to be impossible. It's I mean, a very powerful piece of writing, and it, um, <laughs> you, it, it feels to me, I don't know about you, as though that person has experienced some of this feeling of desolation and loss maybe i don't know maybe. but i do know people have been trying to rescue judas for for generations haven't mm. they mm. um mm. wondering how how that could be possible mm. that he could be forgiven like everybody else mm. and and everything would be okay yeah. and um somehow we have to allow that to be true don't we the the putins the hitlers the people who are beyond Mm. anything that seems redeemable yeah that there could be a party in heaven or is that too i don't i have no problem with believing that anybody um is redeemable i mean for goodness sake how how can we say anything about anybody else mm. um i suppose i mean i grew up with the bible you know and i i i've had such a different approach to the bible now from what i used to but I, I still hear words from the Bible that, are, uh, in a way, I wish I didn't, like Jesus saying it's better for him if he was never born and all this mm, stuff. Mm. And I, I feel I want to sit down with Jesus and say, let me, let me just go through this in a, a minute. Um, <laughs> Maybe you, you, know, you will. You, you said this and yet you mm. came to save mm. everybody, you love everybody, mm. do you or don't you? Do you, don't you? Mm. Um, and what about what about Judas? You took him on you you called him to the yeah. to the group so yeah. Yeah. i know that it everyone's been saying that for years but it's the but job maybe of this is a good time when we're thinking parties to think about those words that one sinner who repents yeah. there's going to be a party in heaven and allow that if we're struggling with somebody i'm not quite on the scale of a judas but somebody who we really feel is wrong that there might yeah. be a possibility of change and of redemption and, mm. and of bunting in heaven. Sorry, I can't get away from this idea of a load of flags and uh, bunting and jelly. I th I think it's a good idea to think like that. To think about p possibly the person you think is least likely <laughs> to be <laughs> celebrated in that way. I do love though the idea. I'm I'm not thought about it before, but the idea that there's there's sort of a quiet moment in heaven and. Everybody's sitting, um, drinking. What do you drink in heaven? Ambrosia? Ah, no, Somewhere that's... Other. I oh, don't know. Was that a Greek myth? Uh, anyway, <laughs> sitting in heaven. And then the door opens and and Judas walks in. Ah. And those who know who it is freeze. And then they hear the second set of footsteps. And it's Jesus who's <laughs> been away for some reason. And... We don't know. We uh, no, don't we don't know. know but um, uh, but I imagine him coming in and and <laughs> and putting his arm around Judah's shoulders and uh, and somehow communicating that a celebrate. How, how, what do I know about anything? Mm, but the mm. the search the 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 fight to rescue Judas will go on as long as there are people around. 
Well, the God fighter... is not willing that any will be lost. No. We know that. We know it went all through the Old Testament. People arguing with God to let people off and people wanting them to be in, not out. Yeah. So it's not a bad mindset, is it? No, it's good to fight to fight for those who other people think are lost. Yes, absolutely. Fight for them. And to, if you can, to love them. I'm thinking one person we know at the moment who doesn't look very lovable at the moment um, and has a lot of problems. And I, w I want him to feel loved. I want him to... I want him to make it i don't mean in t terms of you know, a sort of holy stuff i wanted to make it as a human being and to feel that people do love him mm. but and maybe uh, it's our job to put the bunting out for him yeah if you like. so maybe, i mean that's yeah. always you know it'll always come down won't it to being if somebody has come into your life who needs that extra thing that specialness that party on their behalf mm. then <laughs> they're in they're in your life yeah, so they that's are, where yeah. they are, really. Yes, well, we'll juggle with those tiny <laughs> concepts. Well, <laughs> but I, actually, yeah, I mean, I think that we really, for once, have reason to celebrate something good, somebody whose faith has guided them right the way through, mm. somebody who stands for all the good, solid, whatsoever things yeah. um, that we celebrate in the Bible. Uh, yeah. fairly uncomplicatedly and I'm sure we'll get some emails disagreeing with us but I'm that's sure what I feel yeah. today so it's a bit like a, one of those super crusaders but with a handbag <laughs> to absolute <laughs> consistency which you don't expect in people usually anyway well done and on that note <laughs> well done Queen Elizabeth I really yes. mean it uh, she's done done very very well and I'll tell you what her dad would be very, very proud yes, of her. Yes, he really would. And I think maybe her heavenly father as well. So. Yes. And uh, we look forward to speaking to you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.